Hey everyone, welcome back to another vlog. It's day three of our Behold adventure and we're kicking it off with a countryside tour led by our amazing guide, Kuya Dadong. Now I should mention that we've customized our tour this time around because this is actually our second time doing this tour. Back in 2019, we couldn't fully appreciate the Chocolate Hills due to bad weather. That's why we've decided to revisit the Chocolate Hills, but with an exciting twist, ATVing in the foothills of these iconic mounds. If you missed my previous vlog, I've dedicated a video entirely to our ATV experience. You'll definitely want to check it out. As I mentioned, we've customized our stops, so this tour won't be covering all the locations. That's precisely why we opted for a private tour with Kuya Dadong. It gives us the flexibility to choose the places we want to visit instead of being confined to a group tour. So let's dive into this vlog and explore the wonders of Bahol our way. 6.30 in the morning and we are going to our... Yeah, it's more calm today. So if you guys are looking for breakfast, there's this place right here. It has affordable breakfast. It's next to Ambalaya Divers. And it's in between Alona Divers. So this is where my brother's having breakfast, my brother and sister-in-law. These are the prices. They're actually quite affordable. And right now they don't have much out, but they do have some items. Unfortunately, I'm not going to eat here because they don't really have vegetarian dishes. So the food is fresh, it's affordable. And the location is quite near. This is all, uh, well, except for the coffee from 7-Eleven. Okay. This is um, 200. Uh, so we have the Lumpiang Shanghai, we have the um, uh, sauteed beans and pork. Okay. And then the um, sauteed vegetables, bak Okay. And then we also have uh, two sunny side eggs coming up. That, and that's all for 200. Whoa, that's yes. good. 200 only. Beachfront. <laughs> they have a lot of good stuff. And there's their egg. Striped egg. That's not bad, guys. 200. Mm. We ended up finding a Dunkin' Donuts where I could grab breakfast. So I got that cheese bone witch for 55. And I also got this iced Spanish latte for 140. Those are all the donuts that they have here. Here's the cheese bun which. I know that that <laughs> throws me off. Like, is this pork? But it has a little cheese. This is what vegetarian breakfast in the Philippines looks like. Right on schedule, our reliable guide, Kuya Dadong, arrives as we set off on our exclusive countryside tour starting at 8 a.m. Morning. Good morning. You okay on this side? Yeah, I'm good. Kuya, may papakita ako. Gumawa kami ng listahan mo. Ah, Pupuntahan niya na. Kasi yung mga iba doon, napuntahan na na. Oh, mga before pa, ano, before COVID. Our adventure begins with the farthest stop, a journey that takes approximately an hour and a half to two hours to reach. This initial destination is the site where we'll be embarking on a thrilling ATV ride in the picturesque foothills of the renowned Chocolate Hills. Most tours start at the farthest stop, allowing you to cover the most distant attraction first and working your way back to explore other captivating locations along the way. We're signing our life away here. <laughs> so we're gonna do three ATVs. This one? This is what we're doing today. <laughs> right now we're going all the way up there to 158 steps. You guys having fun? Okay. <laughs> that thing is so fun. First time to ride the uh, bike. You're doing a great job, Batista. Yeah, I know. Huh? She's right, she can handle it. Hey. 
<laughs> yeah, it is. There's only like 50 steps. We well, came from all the way down. Yeah, but you know, I just look up. Because if you look down, you get a little dizzy. Don't look down. <laughs> This is the panoramic view of the Chocolate Hills, exclusive to Graham ATV riders. Just don't reverse. No. Definitely recommend, guys. You have to try it. Our following destination is the Tarshir Sanctuary. Big thanks to Kuya Dadong for taking us to a new location, the Balar Bahol Enchanted Zoological and Botanical Garden. As I mentioned, this is our second time on this tour, and we originally thought there was only one Tarshir Sanctuary, so it's a pleasant surprise to explore a new location. We just paid, and now we're going over here. Oh, there's the horse. Can I take a picture here? It looks so different. Oh, oh, wow. I don't oh wow, this is nice. That's a different one that we went to. Oh, that's cool. At least we have a different experience now. Yeah, yeah it looks completely different. And naturally, my brother couldn't resist the opportunity to snap a photo with this Tarshir. Oh, wow. Wait, what is this? So you take this bottle, and if you're stressed, you throw it against this wall for 20 pesos. And you see all the bottles there? Look at that. Beautiful. So now we're going to the tar shears. Thank you. Straight then left lang po. A noteworthy aspect of this site is the inclusion of well-informed Tarshir caretakers at every Tarshir viewing point. According to the caretakers, they adopt the practice of allowing the Tarshirs to move freely within their habitat. They also explain that Tarshirs tend to gravitate toward areas with ample food resources, emphasizing the connection between food availability and Tarshir presence. Fortunately, on the day of our visit, we were lucky to encounter four of these fascinating creatures. Tarshirs rank among the world's tiniest primates, measuring on average between 3.3 to 6.3 inches in length. Similar to the one right here, they feature lengthy fingers and feet equipped with adhesive pads at the tips, enabling them to skillfully cling to tree branches. These little creatures are mainly nocturnal, which means they are at their liveliest during the night. So if you spot one during the day, like this one, chances are you'll find them taking a well-deserved nap. What truly sets them apart is their disproportionately large eyes, each approximately the size of their brain, granting them exceptional low light vision and enhancing their prey spotting abilities in the darkness. Their dietary choices predominantly consist of insects, forming the bulk of their meals. Tarshirs face the grim reality of being labeled as a vulnerable species due to the persistent threats of habitat loss and their unfortunate involvement in the illegal pet trade. The relentless encroachment on their natural environments and the unlawful trade of these unique creatures has placed them in a precarious position. In response to this critical conservation challenge, efforts are being made to safeguard and preserve Tarshir populations. Initiatives like the one at the Balar Bahol Enchanted Zoological and Botanical Garden play a crucial role in the protection of these fascinating primates. 
Responsible tourism practices, such as those employed at this location, not only provide a platform for the public to appreciate these animals in their natural habitat, but also contribute significantly to the efforts aimed at ensuring the survival of Tarshirs for future generations to marvel at. This location provides several additional attractions for an additional fee, and if you're in need of a meal, they have a tempting lunch buffet available for 395 pesos. However, since our main focus for this stop was the Tarshir encounter, we decided on a relatively short visit, which lasted approximately half an hour. This choice allowed us to completely enjoy our time with the Tarshirs, while still leaving room for some time to explore the grounds of this location. Of course, it's not a trip unless we take a picture in front of the sign. Next up is the man-made forest. However, Kuya Dadong made a quick detour for a surprise, the chance for me to finally savor the famed orange coconut that has caught my eye all around Bahol. So this is the coconut I've been wanting to try, this orange one. I so this is the orange coconut, it looks just like the other coconut, and they make you a spoon. Hi! Sorry, I don't have any food. We've successfully reached the iconic man-made forest in Bahol. Comprising a dense stand of towering mahogany trees, this forest was established to combat deforestation and promote reforestation in the area. So this is the man-made forest. We made the decision to pass on the river cruise this time around since we've already had the pleasure of experiencing it. However, I must emphasize that it's absolutely worth including in your itinerary if you're embarking on the countryside tour. It's a culturally enriching part of the Bahol adventure that's not to be missed. Next up is the Blood Compact Monument, a place of historical significance and cultural importance in Bahol. This site commemorates the historic event that took place on March 16, 1565, when a local chieftain and Spanish explorer sealed a compact of friendship and cooperation through a Blood Compact ritual. I guess. The Why you? This is 50. Yeah. Our final destination brings us to the Bahol Bee Farm. This unique and eco-friendly farm is renowned for its dedication to organic and sustainable practices. Visitors to the Bahol Bee Farm have the opportunity to explore an array of activities and attractions, with ice cream being one of the undisputed highlights at the farm. This is says gluten-free. Oh, wow. Is everything made with coconut milk? That's the one she recommended. Oh yeah. Did you try the avocado? Yeah, it was good. I liked it. So I got peanut kisses and buko. I got a double scoop. It's the gift shop. I was particularly motivated to revisit the farm for a second time due to the inspiration I drew from my niece's courage. Let me provide some context. During our previous visit, my niece was among the select few in our group who fearlessly held a frame of bees and their honeycomb. Witnessing her courage left quite an impression on me. So being in Behold once again, I felt compelled to check off a special item from my bucket list. Oh, so that's to the restaurant to the left. Can we check it out first? You know the garden with the bees? A prominent highlight at the Bahol Bee Farm is their exceptional on-site restaurant that offers a charming and inviting ambiance with open-air seating that overlooks the tranquil blue waters of the sea. This dining establishment is not just about delicious food. It's an immersive culinary experience that perfectly embodies the farm's dedication to organic, sustainable, and locally sourced cuisine.
The size of the farm is quite extensive, which is why they offer complimentary tour guides at the entrance. Given that we visited before, we chose not to take a guide this time. Instead, we preferred to leisurely explore the farm, navigating our way independently to find the section where the bees were located. We're before, right? All right, guys, tell, tell them what happened with the bees. Oh, oh there's one bee. There's one. Well, right now there's um, no bee farm um, because, because of what happened a couple of years ago. Well, uh, there typhoon was a, or yeah, death. Typhoon, because of the typhoon or death, mm -hmm. this farm got basically destroyed. Mm -hmm. So they haven't been able to rebuild the bee farm. Oh. But they were able to rebuild part of the farm. Having completed our tour with the Behold Bee Farm as our final destination, it was time to conclude the day's adventures and head back to our new hotel for check-in. Interestingly, the journey back was quick, taking just 15 minutes to reach Alona Beach. Hello, I'm Dodo. Thank you for coming here in Behold. Bye. We're talking about coming back at 12, it's what, three o'clock? <laughs> now we're going to our new hotel we're staying over here at lost horizon with that we bring our countryside tour to a close stay tuned for the upcoming vlog where we'll take you along as we check into our new hotel and enjoy our final night in beautiful behold your support means the world to me so please remember to give a thumbs up share and hit that subscribe button thank you for being a part of my journey